Okay, in the previous tutorial, when I, we went over the, the pen tool and the advantages that that might bring for kind of drawing a character like this and kind of clean up in general, even if you're using like doing more of a Looney Tunes or anime style and animate. And so in this lesson, what we're going to talk about is the parenting structure, which is the main way that we're going to rig the, the bulk of the body together right here for a simple rig in Adobe Animate, as well as symbols. And so the reason that we need to convert a lot of these different layers that I've created right here into symbols is so that we can parent them together. The parenting won't work unless they're turned into symbols first. So let's kind of go over this here. So um, some advantages of turning something into a symbol is that you can parent things. We can also change the anchor point and we can bring them into our library right here. So um, if we go over to the library, which for me is um, right here, um, you can find it under this panel right here, but you can also, if, you, if your panel is not set up like mine, which is likely, sorry, you go to Windows and then Library right here. And so whenever you create a, turn something and convert something into a symbol, it's going to show up in your library right here, which is nice because you can reuse that asset in the future if, if you decide to. So. I'm just going to go from top to bottom and turn things into symbols. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is some of these objects I'm not going to turn into symbols. So these eyebrows I'm not, and then the eyelashes I'm not going to convert into symbols right here. And so that's really important. And so um, the reason for that is a disadvantage of symbols is with the eyelashes, if I go to the sub selection tool, the way that I drew it, which I went over in the last lesson, so if I want the eyes to close, I just go like that, and then my eyes are closed. And so I don't want to turn that into a symbol because I'm going to lose that control right here. And then similarly for the eyebrows, I'm going to show you all a technique in a future video, which is kind of using the, the bone tool, which to me is a pretty imperfect tool, but it can be useful for things like if your character has like tentacles or like eyebrows, things like that. It, it can be useful right there. So I'm not gonna turn that into a symbol either, but most everything else I am. So let's kind of go from the top right here. So I'm selecting the bangs right here, which is this top layer up here. And uh, the way easy way to select them is instead of trying to go up here and like click around, just right here on the timeline, click right there using the selection tool right here and it'll highlight everything for you. So let's turn this into a symbol. So I'm gonna right click and go to convert to symbol right here. So I'm right clicking on the canvas right here and going second to the bottom, convert to symbol. Um, and we'll name it right here. So I'll call this hair bangs. And with my video lessons, we're always gonna use graphic as the option right here. There's two other options right here. Just, just stick with graphic is my opinion here. So press okay. And you can see this blue bounding box comes around it right here. And um, if we go into the library, it's, it shows up as a symbol right there. And additionally, when I click on the free transform tool, I have this anchor point that shows up right here. And if I press Q or go to the free transform tool, I can change the anchor point. And so right now it's going to rotate from that point. And this is really important when it comes to the rigging process. And so if I want the anchor point to be somewhere else, it'll rotate from that point right there. So um, that'll become clearer and clearer as we continue to work on this. So I'm just going to go from top to bottom and turn everything into a symbol that needs to be. So eyebrow, I'm skipping. Eyebrow, I'm skipping. Mouth, I'm going to skip for now. We are going to turn the mouth, um, all the different mouth shapes into symbols, but I'm going to go over that in, uh, the, uh, in a future lesson right here because we're going to go one step deeper um, to create replacement animations for the mouth. So that'll be a little bit more complicated. So what do we have right here? So we have the eyelash. This is the leftover thing. Here we go. So the eyelash I'm not going to do. So the eye. Um, the eye I am going to turn into a symbol. If you want your character to, to go cross-eyed, um, you, you, you're going to want to turn this into a symbol and then duplicate it and create another over here and convert that into a symbol. I don't really plan on my character going cross-eyed. Um, and so I'm going to go for kind of like the easier solution. So for that, I have the eye right here. I'm going to press Command-C. So it's not a symbol yet. Um, 
and then I'm just going to press Command V and paste it. I need to hide my face so I can see the my reference image underneath right there. So I have I pasted it right there, and so now I need to flip this horizontally so that it matches that right because it's kind of rotated the wrong way. So I'm just going to go to Modify, Transform, uh, Flip Horizontal, and so now I can move that into place right here. And so now I want to select both eyes, so I just uh, click right here using the selection tool, and then it selects both of them automatically. And so now I right click, convert to symbol. I'll call this eyes in all caps. And so now when I move one eye, it moves the other. And so that'll just make animation a little bit easier for me right there. So that's kind of your choice stylistically. And you can see the eyes show up right there under the library. All right, so continue to go down here. So with my jawline right here, if I press Q and I move it up and down, my ears move with it. And so depending on your character, that might be totally fine with you if you want your ears to move with your jaw. But I, I kind of want the ears to kind of be on the, their own thing. So I'm going to press plus for a new layer. I'm going to call this ears. And I'm going to go back to my face layer using the selection tool. I'm just going to click, click, zoom in a little bit so I can see this a little better. Click, click, holding shift the whole time to select those. Command C to copy them. Then I'm just going to delete them before I paste them to get them off of that face layer. Click on my ears layer, shift command V to edit paste in place. And they're right there. I'm going to take this whole layer and just move it behind the face right there. So things are ordered correctly. And so now we can kind of keep moving here. So the face I'm going to tur turn into symbol. So I'm just going to select it right there. Right click, convert to symbol face. And I'm just continuing to convert some of these things into symbols here. The neck, I want to be a symbol. Right click, convert to symbol. Body, definitely need to convert that into a symbol. Right click, convert to symbol. And then the hair I'm gonna hold off on just for a minute here. And okay, so going into the library right here we have all those different objects right here. And one thing to remember with the library is you can organize this if you want to using these folders. So you can add new folders right here if you want to. So I can click right here, make a new folder, and I'm just going to call this ref and put my character sheet. Just click it and drag it into there. Then I'm going to make one called um, body group. You don't need to do this, but this is just, I like kind of to keep things organized. I want the eyes just to kind of be in the root folder so that they're easier to find. But, you know, it's just a way to tidy, tidy that up if you want to. And, okay, so um, two fundamental reasons why we went through that step of converting things to symbols. Um, one is so that we can kind of change the anchor points of things, and the other is so that we can parent things together here. And so let's go over parenting. So. To get into the parenting view in the timeline, you click on this button right here, and it's going to pull up this window right here. And if we, let me show you. So in Photoshop, I save this image. That this is a look into the future in terms of how we're going to parent this thing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to the body is going to be the root. We're going to parent the neck to the body. We're going to create a, a little kind of object right here. I called it the head knoll. It's just an object that I place behind the head so that I can rotate the head left and right right here. And the reason we had to do that is um, so that we can have jaw movement and rotate the head left and right. But you can see everything else is parented to that knoll. So we're just one, two, three things and everything else is parented to that. So this is in the scheme of things, this is a really simple rig right here. This might seem complicated just if this is your first time rigging, but you'll kind of look back on this later and it, it should hopefully kind of feel like it's pretty simple in retrospect at some point here. So the body's going to be the root. And so let me just zoom in on this. And so we have the, the body right there. And so I have things into the parenting view by clicking on this so that this is showing up right here. So I want to parent the neck to the body. But before I do that, 
when I rotate the neck, you can see it's rotating from that point, and that's not the way a neck rotates, right? So uh, I'm gonna press Q or go to this free transform tool and then just move that down to the bottom right there. And so now that's kind of rotating a little bit more the way a neck would rotate right there. All right, so that's the step one, is step one is to kind of change your anchor point, which is this little white dot, into the point where you think that layer should be rotating from. And now we're gonna parent that to the body. And so to do that, you just click on this little box right here, this to the right of neck, and just drag it, and you can see this little red line coming, so I'm clicking and holding. And I'm gonna drag it onto the body right there. I'm gonna let go. And so you can see now the neck is parented to the body. And so what that means now is um, when I select the body and I move it, the neck is going to move with it. When I rotate the body, the neck is going to move with it right there. And so that's the general structure that we're going to work with here. So now um, we can see with the face, I want that jaw to be able to move like that. And so you can see the anchor point for the face is all the way up there. And so if I rotate the head, it's rotating from that point way up there. Let me hide the character sheet so we can see this a little better. So when I rotate the head, it's rotating from there, which is no good. So I'm gonna create that, that null object that I spoke of before in order to kind of keep this parenting structure going and make it so that I can kind of have this jaw move up and down. So I'm gonna to go to the top layer up here. I'm gonna press plus, and I'm just gonna call this head null right there. And I'm gonna create the simplest object in the world. So I'm just gonna go down here. I could even have this be a rectangle. I'll go down to the oval tool. And I'm gonna create an object where I want, where I think the head and the neck should connect. That's kind of the idea. So I'm just gonna draw a circle right here. And this is gonna be the, the head null right there. And so you can see when I s click on this, it's gonna rotate from that point. So this is really important. So this head null, you, you really need to, you have to turn this into a symbol or else it won't work. So I'm gonna right click on it, go down com to convert to symbol, and I'll just call this head null. And in the library, I'm just gonna drag that into the rest of the body group just to stay organized. Okay, so we don't want this to show up though, right? So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna move it all the way to the back underneath the face and the ears right there. And I'm gonna parent that head null to the neck. And so I'm just gonna click where this, oops, where that yellow box is, click and drag onto the neck right there. And so now when I press Q or go to the free transform and I rotate the whole body, it's gonna move the neck and that head null object right there. Oops. And I'll press edit undo, there we go to rotate it back into place. So now, everything else, I'm gonna parent to this head null object. And again, if I didn't turn that into a symbol, when I rotate it, nothing else will follow. So this parenting structure doesn't work unless things are turned into symbols for whatever reason. So um, the, everything else I'm gonna parent to this head null. So ears, um, face, just everything to the head null, eyes, And I'll just kind of keep this going here. Oops, I missed one. So if you parent something to the wrong thing, if you want to unparent it, you can just click it and then drag it to the left right there. And then it's not parented to anything anymore. So if I parent this to the wrong thing like that, no problem. I just click on it, drag it right there, it's unparented. So uh, click and drag onto the head null. And I also need to turn on the hair, and I need to parent this to the head null. So now when I select the head null, I press Q, and I rotate it. Um, everything kind of rotates with it. And yeah, so that's kind of the basic idea. So for my character rig, that's probably the most that I imagine their, their head tilting right there. So that honestly works for me. Um, and so that is the parenting structure right there. And so uh, last things I need to do right here is I need to um, grab this eyelash 
and I'm going to press Command C, make a new layer, Command V, and bring this over to the other side. So I, I'm making um, a right eyelash right there, and then I'm going to parent that to the head null as well. And so next up, this thing is getting really close. Like so, basically the rig is really coming together here. So um, the eyes right here are set up to move and you can see since I did the eyelashes the way I did them I can um, kind of mask over the eyes and each eyelash can move independently right there um, and so uh, next up we're gonna go over um, mouth shape replacements and um, we'll eventually go over the eyebrows too here using the bone tool. And then after that, the rig's gonna be done and we're ready to move on to animation.